In the last few years, questions surrounding transgender athletes and whether they should be allowed to compete in women's sports have moved from the periphery of our national dialogue to the mainstream. At the heart of the matter, challenging questions about what constitutes fairness and how to achieve inclusiveness, questions we're addressing in a three-part Outside the Line series. Today, the final installment. According to a Gallup poll conducted in May, more than 69% of Americans say that transgender athletes should only be allowed to compete on sports teams that conform with their birth gender. The issue of whether transgender women should compete in women's sports can be deeply personal and public for the athletes themselves, both the transgender athletes and those who are competing against them. Here's Tisha Thompson. August 7th, Texas Governor Greg Abbott signs a ban on transgender women competing in women's collegiate sports. The Save Women's Sports Act is now law in the state of Texas. Beside him, 23-year-old Riley Gaines. In 2022, the All-American swimmer was a senior at the University of Kentucky. He's Gaines, playing 14 100s. I was, I think, ranked third in the country. Person who was leading the country, I had never heard of before. Leah Thomas will capture the win faster than she swam this morning. Leah Thomas, that season, became the first openly transgender NCAA Division I champion in any sport, winning the women's 500 freestyle in Atlanta. The next day, March 18th, 2022, Gaines swam against Thomas in the 200 freestyle. We support the women! Support fair sport! There were protesters who were there either in support or opposition of Thomas swimming against the women. Women stand up! Women stand up! I really tried to think about myself, to think about my team, not think about the outside noise, but it's really, really hard to do. I felt like I was going into the race with my hands tied behind my back. Can you remember what you're thinking in the water? Would Thomas win again? Would Thomas back off? Who would prevail in this situation? Leah Thomas into fifth. I look up at the board. Before I even looked at my name, I looked at Thomas's name. And I saw the number five. And I look beside my name, and there's a five. The NCAA official looks at Thomas and myself and says, great job, but you guys tied. And we only have one trophy. So we're gonna give this trophy to Leah. Thomas held the trophy for fifth place. Gaines held the one for sixth. They told me when pictures were being taken, Thomas had to have the trophy, which just reduced it down to a photo op. I felt so belittled. I felt so betrayed. Just so one person can, can be happy and the NCAA can seem virtuous and seem like they're being so inclusive and kind. My feelings didn't matter. What mattered to the NCAA were the feelings of a biological male. Gaines is now one of the most high profile speakers on the issue with more than a million social media followers. She uses male pronouns to describe Thomas and other transgender women. What do you say to people who say, you are hurting me. You are hurting people I care about. You are hurting my community. You are causing pain. I don't want to be considered a bigot or a transphobe or all of those labels. There's no hate in my heart. But me, myself, personally, I don't actually think this person is a woman. I don't actually think this person is a female. Therefore, when I say she, I feel like I'm going against my moral compass. The beauty of sports lies in a sense of fairness. Thomas took a spot from a woman who deserved that roster spot. Thomas could have placed dead last and it would still be just as unfair because we were robbed of opportunities. And that's what fairness means. It's about an equal playing field and we most certainly did not have that. It's been a year and a half since Riley Gaines and Leah Thomas competed against each other. Thomas didn't respond to our recent request for an interview, 
But in May 2022, she did sit down with ESPN's Katie Barnes. I'm a swimmer at heart. It's the sport I've done since I was five years old. It's the sport I fell in love with, and it's what I love to do, and it's a part of who I am. I don't want to give that up. In 2019, after two seasons on the University of Pennsylvania men's team, Leah Thomas came out as transgender and began testosterone suppression as part of her transition. In the fall of 2021, after spending one additional season on the men's team and taking a year off due to the Ivy League's COVID cancellation, Thomas began competing on the women's team as a senior, and her story polarized the world. Uh, have you heard the name Leah Thomas? Leah Thomas, a transgender athlete. Her presence has been a big source of controversy. We've seen split support. What has it been like to be Leah Thomas? It's been a very, very interesting experience at times. There's been a lot of noise. What do you think is the biggest misconception people have about you, specifically? Um, the, the biggest misconception, I think, is the reason why I transitioned, where, where people will say, oh, she just transitioned, so she would have an advantage, so she could win. I transitioned to be happy, to be true to myself. It was a very difficult time. I was just stuck in this depression, and I struggled with uh, suicidal thoughts. Um, being trans is, is not a choice. I didn't have any other choice because not transitioning was not leading me anywhere. March 2022, Atlanta, Georgia, the NCAA Swimming Championships. Thomas competes on the national stage in multiple events. Of course, at the meet, you know, there were protesters. It's not complicated. But how does that affect you mentally and physically in the pool? I try to ignore it as much as I can. There was one comment that, that I ended up saying. They ended it with saying, I hope this, this haunts you. It actually ended up helping me shut it out even more and say, no, I, you, you won't affect me like this. When I dive into the pool, nothing else matters. Leah Thomas pulling away over the final 150 meters. Thomas wins the NCAA championship. Well, Leah Thomas has become the first transgender athlete to win a Division I national championship in any sport. Penn swimmer won the 500-yard freestyle. What reaction do you have toward other folks who feel that you, know, you shouldn't be able to compete. I, I disagree. Trans women competing in women's sports does not threaten, threaten women's sports as a whole. Trans women are a very small minority of all athletes, and we haven't seen any massive wave of trans women dominating. Trans women are women, and so it's still a woman who is getting that scholarship or that opportunity. It's a part of athletics where, where people are competing against one another. What have you learned through all of this? I hope people can just see trans people are just like anybody else. We have the same dreams and goals and wants as any cis person, and we just want to be able to, to live our lives. Leah Thomas had hoped to compete for a spot on the U.S. team at the 2024 Paris Olympics. But shortly after she spoke with Katie Barnes, the international governing body of swimming banned transgender women who've undergone male puberty from competing in women's events, disqualifying Thomas. For more on our series on the transgender athlete, you can head to ESPN.com or the ESPN app.